Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the Legend Quest Omnibus Edition. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this classic fantasy old school style RPG, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about damage and armor. A successful attack causes damage. This is shown in the weapon's damage multiplier. After the attacker scores a successful hit in combat, the attacker rolls a 10-sided die. This 10-sided die is then multiplied by the damage multiplier and rounded up. This damage is then subtracted from the defender's life's blood. There are five different types of damage that can be done. Standard damage is most typically caused by fire, poison or magic. Unlike weapon damage, standard damage typically affects the entire body or vast portions of it together as opposed to a more specific injury. Weapon damage is broken down into four categories, slashing, piercing, blunt, and tearing. Slashing damage is caused by cuts. A likely example of a slashing attack would be a large sword or an axe. Piercing damage is caused by stabbing. Common piercing weapons are spears and arrows, of course. It should be noted that piercing weapons are typically more effective at breaching armor than other styles of weapons. Blunt damage is caused by smashing or bludgeoning. Blunt attacks include punching as well as clubs and hammers. Tearing damage is caused by ripping. Many animals' claws or teeth cause tearing damage as do serrated weapons. Armor can prevent the character from taking damage. Armor has a damage absorption rating, or DAR, D -A -R, that varies based on the type of damage done. Any type the character takes damage, subtract the correct DAR from the total damage done. This damage is not applied to the character, but to the armor by subtracting it from the damage absorption limit, DAL or DAL. In this way, the DAL will decrease, but the DAR never changes. If the damage is less than or equal to the DAR, the character takes no life's blood damage. Armor can never block more points than its remaining DAL or DAL. If the DAR is higher than the DAL, the armor will absorb damage equal to the DAL and then be reduced to DAL 0. When the DAL is reduced to 0, the armor is useless for defense. It still hinders the character with the same attribute reduction. It is sometimes possible to use a weapon to cause damage in a style that it was not intended to. The reasons for this vary, but it is possible to do. Game masters must consider the weapon being used to determine if it is possible in the given situation. A damage downgrade causes the damage to slip to the next lower column following a table. Typically this is a reduction of half damage, as in the attribute reduction associated with armor will reduce an armor wearer's agility and combat turns. Armor is not the only thing that should carry an attribute reduction. Heavy loads of all sorts can carry an attribute reduction as well. In most cases, this attribute reduction can be offset by strength. The character's strength will reduce or even cancel the attribute reduction. Often the game master will simply assign a heavy load attribute reduction to things that characters may wish to tote around. Just like armor attribute reduction modifier, a heavy load attribute reduction will reduce agility and combat rounds, and heavy load attribute reduction will add to any other attribute reduction. Let's talk about special damage. There are many situations in which characters will take damage from other than piercing, slashing, blunt, or tearing sources. Torches, when used as a weapon, act as an irregular club, for example, plus they do an additional half-die multiplier, standard damage from the flames. Flaming oil thrown on a character will also cause damage, so all sorts of improvised weapons can be employed. Acids thrown on characters will do damage similarly to flaming oil, perhaps. You can even, of course, coat your weapons in poison. There is an optional rule that allows you to prevent further damage from poison by making a successful first aid test or check. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about combat rounds. As you can see, it is very important to take into consideration the sort of weapon that you are going to be employing 
as well as your physical limitations when it comes to wearing armor. You don't want to hamper yourself, your own movements. So this role-playing game truly shines if you want detailed, very important, short combats. You can handle larger combat situations as well through roleplay. But if you want to focus the action on the confrontation between the player characters and important enemies, or perhaps not so important enemies that are in the way towards more important objectives or foes, this is the perfect tabletop role-playing game for those detailed combat situations. Thank you for watching this part of the review, and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you. And see you later.